All right, so sometimes as reptile breeders, we get a lot of heat for keeping our animals in racks or plastic tubs. A lot of people, especially in Europe or different countries, or even people here in the U.S. that are not, you know, that are maybe newer to the hobby, they don't think that keeping animals in tubs or plastic containers is adequate for the animals. So this is what Brian Barczyk's talking about in his new video. He's talking about how basically a lot, he gets, I'm, I'm sure he gets a lot of heat for it. He's a lot you know he has a bigger channel than us he just built this new reptarium where he has these naturalistic enclosures and he's saying how he's enjoying watching the animals in those brand new enclosures a lot more than they are when he's back at his facility in the plastic you know rack nice. systems and to be honest I completely understand that you know when you see a really nice setup you know enclosure that has some live plants and some natural soil and bark and real branches it's a lot nicer than when you open up a tub and you see a you know a crested gecko on some brown paper and some you know toilet paper tubes or something <laughs> and he also brought up another good point where is it better for the animal to make it visually appealing for us or is it better for certain species to be on that like brown paper or tubs or racks so that is a very important discussion and uh, because just because it looks good for us doesn't mean it's better for the animal and compared to a rack or a tub that doesn't look as visually as appealing so sometimes what we think is better for the animal is actually not what the animal prefers because a naturalistic enclosure might look a lot nicer to us but if the basic requirements of that specific animal aren't met the animal's not going to feel com comfortable and it's not going to thrive sometimes real quick the uh you know like a plastic tub that is set up properly is going to hold humidity a lot better if you know depends on what you put in there but the animal doesn't really care if you know the decorations in the cage are nice as long as it could hide for example with a crested gecko it wants to be able to feel secure it wants to hide it wants to climb so as long as all those requirements are met especially like crested geckos or something they're not smart enough to be like you know what why don't I have a nicer branch they don't think like that that's people emotions that's what people think and then we try to put those same emotions and think oh maybe my my gecko will like a nicer branch a brighter branch or brighter flowers in their enclosure they don't think like that they want to eat they want to make sure there's no, you know, um, nothing hunting them. They don't want to be prey to anything. And they want to be tight in tight little spaces where they can feel safe and secure. And that's when those requirements are met, the geckos are going to feel a lot, you know, safer. They're going to grow better. They're going to eat better. And they're going to thrive. Yeah, and like David was mentioning that sometimes the tubs or the less nice nicer looking enclosures are going to do better so they they might have you might meet all their basic requirements but one might have meet it better like the tub with the humidity also the opaqueness of the tub exactly so they're, they're not seeing the outside world as much they're not seeing the neighboring geckos or or people that were way bigger than them they think we might eat them they're not seeing that as well so they're gonna feel a lot more comfortable that's one of the arguments I've made in the past specifically for the new Caledonian geckos but again it might vary per species you know and including it might vary per like predator or prey animals like crested gecko is gonna be more of a prey to like gargoyle geckos or other animals lichianus yeah. birds and it might be different for those guys because they're more worried about being eaten than compared to a large monitor lizard which those might be better in a more naturalistic bigger setup you know because they're they're not really as worried about being eaten as a crested gecko right and i think the main thing to consider is how are the animals doing in captivity are they thriving if they're thriving it means the animals are doing well that is just basic if if the animals are you know growing eating well um they're breeding then we know that we're doing something right obviously if there's some other species of geckos for example like a satanic leaf tail gecko that you're gonna have to keep in a little more naturalistic enclosure because for some reason they just don't do well in like tubs or like very uh, basic type of low cost enclosure so it depends on the species and that's how we're gonna gauge this you know if the animals seem to be doing well they're thriving like leopard geckos crested gecko ball pythons corn snakes all these animals they've always done well in tubs they've 
you know, thrived and we've been able to produce a lot more than sometimes than there are in the actual wild. And if you look at our geckos or if you look at some of our animals in captivity that are kept in tubs, they look a lot better than the ones that, that are in the wild. <laughs> They're basically, you know, perfect not on a nice full belly. They don't have parasites. So it's hard to say, you know, oh, this animal be, would be better off in the wild because I'm pretty sure if the gecko had a conscious and you could give it the two options of, hey, you can live in this tub. Um, you're going to have, you know, places to hide. You're going to have endless amount of food. You're going to get to breed whenever no you want. No one's going to eat you. No one's going to eat you. Or you could go in the wild. You're going to be... I guess free, but um, you know you have predators you have to watch out for. You have competition for food. Um, you have to find food. You have to like find it's, it's food. Every it's everyday survival. You so, know? so now this is this is the argument. It, this is just a conversation we need to have to maybe educate some of those people that do not like to keep animals in tubs. And I understand. Listen, I if I could, we would keep every single animal here in a naturalistic enclosure, but it's not realistic. If you want to have a business, if you want to, you know, especially if you're trying to do this as a living because we're not this is not a hobby for us anymore. This is what we love and this is what we do for a living. We have to keep the cost low, and obviously, we only do that with the animals that that thrive in those conditions. We can't put, you know, abronias with the brown paper because it's not they, it, they wouldn't thrive so as long as the animals are thriving i don't see a problem with it but of course we're open to discussion in the comments below you could you could state your opinion and, and we will read them and, and you know talk about it another important thing that i was that i was just thinking of is while keeping the cost low you can afford to have more animals and produce more animals. Exactly. Now, n that's not just important for business, but it's also important for conservation. So, what, like for example, the crested geckos, they're not doing the best in the wild. So, and we're producing in the United States more, probably more geckos than there are in the wild. So you're helping preserve that species by producing so many of them. Also, it doesn't make sense for people to go out there and smuggle them out when you can get a crested gecko for like forty dollars yeah you know and and another thing is those people that do want every animal to be in a beautiful big enclosure you gotta you gotta be you can't be you know hypocritical because if you want that for the animals then you're gonna have to be willing to pay instead of for that twenty five dollar leopard gecko that you bought you're gonna have to spend forty or fifty dollars for that same leopard gecko because the cost to produce that leopard gecko is gonna go way up and it's just not, you know, it's, it's not realistic because a lot of, most people at the reptile shows are going to want to get their cheap pet, you know. And I understand, you know, sometimes the parents don't want to buy an expensive gecko because they don't know if the kid is going to be able to, you know, to, to maintain it. So they're kind of tr starting out and you, you can't invest that much in a gecko at first, like on a starter gecko or something. But obviously, you got to keep that in mind. If you want all these things, then you gotta be willing to pay that much more. You gotta, you can't just think, oh, the, you know, we're gonna upgrade all our animals to naturalistic enclosures, all our babies, all our breeders, and then they're gonna be the worth the same price. No, the the cost is gonna go up. You know, so that's something to keep in mind. You can't just try to think about why it's good for you or what you think it's good for the animal. You gotta think about a whole bunch of different little variables that you probably have no idea about because you maybe you just keep a pet leopard gecko or something you know so um trust me most of the breeders that that do this for a living would love to keep all their animals in naturalistic enclosures but it's just not financially possible we just can't do that we can't afford to do that and it just as is this business is not really a business that you would get into to make money and if you're going to lose more money by by doing that it's you know it's gonna we're gonna the breeders are gonna take a big hit there's gonna be less animals available and the animals are gonna be more expensive yeah and if there's less animals available it could also make the wild populations of those animals suffer so these are just things to think about you know um like he was saying um we would love to put all these animals in naturalistic bioactive setups but you know it's not really feasible and these are just things to add to the conversation, you know, let us know what you guys think. And um, I, I personally think we, sh we need to approach this species by species. Because yeah. some species, like the crested geckos, they have been proven and shown to thrive in tubs. 
while other animals like monitor lizards probably wouldn't do the best in tubs, you know? Right. So it's something that we should approach species by species and a conversation we need to have and we should honestly leave out how we feel and we should separate how we feel in fact. And logic, to, exactly. To have a, a proper conversation about this. Another thing is, like Manny was saying, we gotta take it species by species. Uh, leopard gecko that is gonna require heat is does well with a under tank mat or an under tank heating system but a bearded dragon that also requires heat requires that light that you know they love the lights and the lights stimulate their appetite and all these things so obviously with bearded dragons nobody keeps them in tubs i hope not and they they have to be kept different so when it comes to the animals we got to see what are their requirements bearded dragons for sure they need the lights they need the uv they need the heat um what do leopard they prefer geckos too? exactly what do they prefer some animals prefer overhead heating while some like for example blue tongue skinks if you give them the uh, this is you know one of our, our big breeder friends what he's tried in the past is to give a heat overhead heat light and a heat mat and nine times out of ten that blue tongue would choose the under tank heater why because he can stay burrowed and hidden from predators and still get the heat while when you would go out and bass, you're always going to have to be aware of your surroundings. So it's a little more nervous because a predator like a bird or something could swoop in at any time and eat it. Yeah. So uh, like blue tongue skinks, that's a big one because blue tongue skinks is a big lizard, you know, um, and a lot of people that breed them keep them in racks. We doing, we, we're in that group, you know. Trust me, if we could, we would love to keep them in big, nice enclosures. Or even outside. Or, or outside or something, but... They just don't do as well. The animals, they don't seem to thrive as well. Um, now, with the blue tongue skinks and other animals, they get a lot of their, you know, vitamin D3 and stuff from their diet, and they don't, they don't seem to need the UVB. And people in Australia and our friend Ray Gergi himself, he's kept blue tongue skinks and bred them for longer than we have been alive. Mm -hmm in rack systems and they all seem to thrive people in australia have this down to a t so we got to take the species into consideration some species you can do it with some you can't and that's okay you know yeah, like a panther chameleon for example exactly. would would never do well in a tub or or no with without uvb or natural uvb like exactly it, even like a panther chameleon sometimes a uh, glass cage looks a lot nicer than a screen cage, but that's not what is best for the chameleon. So you got to take that into consideration. It's not to say that you can't keep a chameleon in a glass cage. You could certainly do that, but you got to make sure it's set up properly. And the, But a screen cage just seems to fit that animal a lot better. So like we are saying, um, not to be ranting this whole time, but how we were saying, please take that into consideration. Don't just be you know don't be hard-headed don't just think of one option or one solution try to see the the different you know variables try to see what other people might think and that's how we get the conversation started I like what Brian Barczyk did by you know starting this video it takes a lot of balls to do that um, especially somebody like him because he's gotten a lot of criticism but um, so we wanted to comment on it I thought you guys would find it interesting let me know what you guys think in the comments below give this video a thumbs up and if you like our you know if you like our content make sure you subscribe to our youtube channel we also have facebook instagram twitter snapchat we post individual content on all of those platforms so if you follow us on all of them you're going to be seeing different stuff and good content of course but like he said you know if you this is really important to us so make sure you let us know what you guys think because we read all of our comments anyways but this is really important yeah and we want to get the we we win we want to get people talking and we want to like let them know that you know there's more than just one option we want to hear different opinions we you know we're also trying to learn there even though we've been doing this for a year you know a good amount of time that doesn't mean we know everything we're always learning always evolving and you know hopefully you guys can help us with that one more thing check out the patreon we're going to start doing exclusive videos on there there, people are going to get exclusive merch, uh, exclusive content, all that stuff. Check out our Patreon if you want to support us. Links in the description, all the social media. Thank you guys for watching and we'll see you next week.